I've worked with over the last two and a half years. This is usually the case. Most people don't know what I'm referring to. And I really want to inform you of it today. So to start, Plan Columbia is an initiative that was being pushed by the Clinton administration. It was signed into activation in 2001 by the Bush administration. And what it did is dedicate over $8 billion to anti-narco trafficking efforts. Uh, just here in Colombia, 80% of that went directly to military funding. To say arms, munitions, vehicles, fatigues, training, and so on. More or less going right back in the pockets of the US, being that they're the main purveyors of those goods. 20% that's left over is the stuff that trickled down into social programming, such as treatment, education, and prevention. Now, the U.S. graded metrics during that 10-year span in order to measure their levels of success and to know where to allocate their funding next. One of those metrics was body count. And as a direct result, we had private and Colombian military begin to enter the large metropolitan cities, such as Cali, Medellin, and especially here in Bogota, where they commence to kidnap homeless, take them out to the countryside, dress them up in guerrilla fatigue, similar to FARC, and execute them, considering them casualties of war. And in turn, bumping up their metrics and receiving more funding from the state. This is a vicious cycle that went unanswered for an entire decade. The program was deactivated in 2012, so just two and a half years ago. Not because of the amount of people dying, but because the initial objectives were never met, which were to hopefully lower the amount of cocaine entering the States and raise its price. Keep in mind, during that 10 year span, the price dropped. The only way that's possible is if there's an increase in supply. Do you really want to question the mechanisms that were in place to allow that as well? To date, there are currently over 10,000 plus people who are no longer with us as a direct result. And that's not accounting for indigenous population, which bumps that up to anywhere between 12 to 15,000. And it's not just indigenous or homeless. Literally anyone the military saw as a target. And we had someone that just happened to be on the tour and explained that their brother had died this way. That they brought him out to the countryside, placed a red Che Guerrero t-shirt on him, placed a copy of the Communist Manifesto in his book bag, and shot him. It's that blatant. So again, unanswered violence during that span. Uh, now, you guys, coming from both sides of the bullet and understanding a bit better how the U.S. policies have influenced some of the violence here, I urge you to do some research yourselves. It's incredibly easy. You can wiki it. It's called Plan Columbia. And if you have friends or family arriving, bring them up to speed. Because this is being suppressed in the media here in Colombia, the U.S., and abroad. Again, you could have come here for any number of reasons and left without ever hearing about this. Remember how many of you didn't raise your hand. So I really urge you to continue that chain. Otherwise, to sum that up, a false positivo or a false positive is a person that's been wrongly associated with the body count of the war. Also keep in mind, there's a plan Mexico currently in the works. Something else you can check out. We move next door.